Welcome back to Callahan Hall. It is Detroit Mercy Media Day. I am joined by Tori Powell. Tori, you, um, you've had a, a really unique journey through playing basketball. You, you had a chance to play at three different high schools, and now this will be your, your third different college. So I guess, let me start this way. You've been the new kid on the block five different times. Now this is your sixth. What's this experience been like compared to those others? Is there any similarities, anything different? I think just over my past experiences, I've gotten the opportunity to be that new person, and that's forced me to mature a little bit. And now being at this school, University of Detroit Mercy, I'm that veteran, you know? I can, um, you know, teach my, my younger players how to, how to do things the right way and um, learn from the mistakes that I've made. <laughs> the mistakes you've made are, are, are growing steps, right? Course, yeah, you can learn from them. You were a three-sport athlete in, in high school, and the thing that sticks out to me right away is you had a chance to train different parts of your body throughout the way to, to become a more complete player. And I talk about this with high school kids all the time, especially when calling the state finals games I was mentioning to off air. Um, how important is it to, to be able to have that opportunity when you're in high school to play all those sports and get yourself ready, not just physically, but mentally? It's a different challenge. No? Absolutely. I think it's important that you, um, you know, venture out as much as you can because then you get to learn, okay, I do like what, you know, you get to learn what you like and what you don't like. So those are definitely that I learned throughout high school. High school, you were an accomplished member of the 4x800 relay. Um, I don't watch a lot of track and field, but I did watch the Olympics in August, right? Mm -hmm. And I learned that the men's track team has a really, really bad habit of dropping the baton <laughs> on the 4x800. Is, that, is, it, is it really that difficult, or do you think for them it was a mental thing? Because you obviously had success doing it. <laughs> yeah. Not dropping, but passing it. <laughs> right. Yeah, no, it's one of those things you just have to pay attention to detail. It's like it's a make it or break it thing. So, you know, just like in basketball, you have to lock in and make sure that you're paying attention to each detail. That's how those multi-sports can, can really pay off each other. It's not just physically, but mentally, too. It helps you focus. Um, you, uh, you played a lot of basketball at UNT Greensboro, and, and every year your minutes in. Uh, last year in the games you played, you started it all but one. I guess from a personal growth standpoint, can you kind of maybe speak to how you grew when you were there and you were part of, as Coach mentioned earlier, a metamorphosis there as they went on to win a conference championship and maybe how you can bring that here and, and help this group kind of merge together in a short amount of time. Sure. I think uh, starting off with the walk-on player really started that motivation for me to, to try my hardest. And then just having my teammates there to encourage me to, to push and my coaches even to hold me accountable to that allowed me to be in that position to you know, continue to grow and learn to get more minutes. Speaking of minutes, I'm sure your mom played a ton. She was a Division II women's basketball player and your grandfather played football at Harvard. I think about that and I know as a younger person, you know, not even in high school yet, I got to be thinking to myself, these are some really good mentors to have, right? And I don't know how close you were with, you know, your grandfather age-wise and all that. Um, but can you maybe just uh, speak to, to how they, that, that experience, your mom playing D2, your grandpa, maybe got you ready to be a, a college athlete when that time came? I know it was a long time ago. You're in your fifth year now. But maybe uh, just kind of speak to how that experience maybe helped and gave you someone to, to kind of rely on when you were, what am I, what am I getting into here? Sure. So um, I do have actually two older sisters. They're twins. They played basketball. So watching them as they train and, you know, being old enough to be able to train with them was really a motivational piece for me. I think with my mom being a Hall of Famer at her university, we lean more towards basketball because of that, and her being able to pour into us really helped um, us develop a relationship with basketball. Now, how much older are your twin sisters? They're two years old. So that was actually one of the things I was going to bring up. It wasn't really well-defined when I was reading parts of your bio, but um, I was thinking, you know, as the, as the younger kid behind two, twin sisters, there had to be um, a part of you that wanted to stand out but maybe had challenges because those two drew so much attention. Did you, did you find yourself maybe building a little bit of a competitive edge in that regard, trying to make a name for yourself and those two got all the attention at the dinner table? Absolutely. I was always the youngest, so, you know, trying to make a name for myself, but they were really um, important in helping me develop my relationship with basketball and, you know, competing against them. I was always smaller, so it was fun playing one-on-one -on -one against them, so um, they definitely helped get better. I'm the youngest too. My, my siblings are 8, 9, 11 years old. Pretty big age gap. But I will say I'm the golden Do you have that opportunity when you were younger to be the golden child of the family? Or? <laughs> if you ask them, yeah. They would say <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, tell me about um, your team, or your, your roommate uh, Sydney Searcy um, mentioned that you're one of her favorite people to be around because you're so close together. Um, 
how have you meshed with some of your other teammates? Do you have any anyone that uh, has really kind of stood out? Maybe the class clown, so to speak. Someone's fun to be around in, in, in separation. You know, everyone has their own personality. I, I can't even just name one because everyone has just. <laughs> they're no, they're all just so fun to be around. Even just from practice to study hall. You know, we we really love to be together. Love talking to players about pregame rituals. Do you have anything in your routine leading up to a game that that you do to get you going game day? Um, I would say I really love to shoot the morning before practice and before a game, I should say, and also um, listen to gospel. Appreciate the insight and uh, glad that our, our viewers had a chance to, to get to know you before the season and hopefully get a chance to see you on the floor and, and the way you kind of take all those things in and, and make you uh, and your team special the way you are. Appreciate the time so much. Thank you for having me. All right, that's Tori Powell. This is Detroit Mercy Media Day here at uh, Callahan Hall. And when we come back, Jeremy Otto has one final special guest. Stick around here and at DetroitTitans.com.